And I see also Nasia is connecting. Oh, great. Hello. Hello, Nasia. <laughs> just in time. <laughs> yes, we're just about we're just about to start. Can you see the screen of, of mine? Yes. 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 Oh, So we can start, yeah? Mm -hmm. Thank you everyone for coming and for joining us. It's getting easier now to, to come along together, despite the geography, the distance, time difference. And it's a pleasure to have you all here, old friends, new friends, and thank you for supporting. Uh, first of all, we would like to introduce once again Lectures Without Borders project, just to, to give you a brief overview of what we are, what we do. Uh, Luba, would you like to, to explain or do you want me to, to tell about? Yeah, or, or Misha or Nasia or, but basically, yeah, we, we are open network of researchers, right, educators around the world. And uh, yeah, we are organizing, of co-organizing lectures around the globe and uh, more you will hear from, from our speakers and from, uh, from Anastasia uh, later. But yeah, basically, we you can find us either on social media or on uh, Slack. If you don't access Slack yet, you can just ask us so that you learn more about how it works. Yeah, and speaking generally, what we did before, we were using the current logistics to arrange the lectures from traveling scientists to schools all over the globe. Now, as, as we all know, traveling is not very trendy thing. That's why we switched to to online activities and what we are trying to do now, we do webinars, it's our second one. And uh, we are really happy to have an attendance here of uh, other people who are enthusiastic about education and science. And we also, uh, as I already mentioned, we do Gasser video library for the schools and for educational associations, because now uh, it's hard for the children to, to have a proper education proper online learning not every country can can allow this so uh, we'll be happy to have your support on this and as you know we have two two key keynote speakers here Anna Balatel and Mikhail Hotekov and I'm happy to pass the the floor to to Anna you have to unmute yourself Okay, I cannot share my screen because you're sharing it. Yes, yes, <laughs> I stopped. Is Anna connecting or? Yes, yes, she's there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, she's great. she's sharing know. the screen. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. Hello, guys. Do you see anything? Okay. Yeah, we can yes. hear. Oh, great. So basically, uh, I'll have a quite a noisy environment here. <laughs> I'm sorry for that in <laughs> advance. Uh, okay, so you've asked me to share some uh, online you can't experience. Get here, we Okay, guys, I'm hearing some, some somebody else there. Is there a question already? Okay, can can we ask everyone uh, except for Anna to mute themselves just to avoid the better connection? Okay, so Lyub asked me to just share some online teaching experience, which of course I had of students, but I didn't have of kids, school kids, so that's uh, quite a challenging task. So I decided to check out uh, like some sections like screen recorder tools, webinar tools, 
digital whiteboard tools, online courses, platforms, and other online teaching resources. So I group them like this, and we'll go ahead and check them out. Okay, the screen recorder tools. Well, I put them in order of my preference. <laughs> my favorite is Camtasia, actually. So uh, if I will have time later, I'll discuss more about it. And then we have Zoom, of course, and, but Mikhail will talk about Zoom, so maybe I'll skip <laughs> that one. And uh, WebEx and all the other ones. So basically, um, Camtasia, why Camtasia? I put you a link where you can find it. Uh, it supports uh, all the operating systems that we use, so it has a very, very, very good built-in video editing tool. So basically, when you're recording a video, you did a mistake. And you can stop it and start recording five seconds before the mistake and continue the video continues. And there are lots of click and drag effects. Very, very, they are very, very pretty. The video in the end looks very pretty. So you can drop anything into your recordings. You can mix and match. You can import and record PowerPoint slides if you want directly into a part of your video. And I find it what best for video lessons and instructional footage. Mm. Also, you have lots of, you can insert quizzes there and there's lots of interactivity. So you can add buttons. You can say like, after you do this exercise, press this button and the video will continue. Or, I mean, uh, you have like many options to choose from. A student can like, a kid can choose like, uh, an option and after that like a different action is going like the video continues in a certain way or in a different way so it's so it's so versatile i mean it's very useful so also the animation is very good in like videos and slides you can zoom in zoom out no, like, level pe unki. So, I mean, lakh. Unka taxi eight lakh per i'm sorry to interrupt may we also kindly ask to mute the micro yeah, I tried to mute everyone. So sorry, so sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, the good news. So there is an education plan for Camtasia. It costs like, it's a one-time fee. We pay it once in a lifetime. It's about 180 euros. I mean, if our institutions can afford to pay for it, I mean, it would be better <laughs> than paying it from our personal pockets whatever, I don't know how it works for everyone. If you have access to Camtasia from your school, I'd recommend to record your online lectures in Camtasia. Okay, the second one is Zoom that we are all using right now. It became very popular later, later but uh, I think Mikhail will talk about Zoom because he's already recording lots of classes in Zoom. So I'm also, I want to hear over. But correct, what can I say? It has a whiteboard, just like Camtasia. You can record high definition here, the, do annotations, notes. Well, we will know it. And we also have searchable transcripts, which I didn't know about. <laughs> so <laughs> I really like that about Zoom. And of course, virtual hand raising, which is a, it's a nice thing. But we'll hear about Zoom later. Oh, the prices in Zoom, I think you all know them. Just uh, Maybe there is, during these crazy times, there is an option to, rec to request a, a subscription free of charge from Zoom. I think it's worth trying. So if you want to use it, why not? Because for educators and probably for our project, they'll be quite open because, I mean, we are volunteers, so maybe they like that. Okay, WebEx. Uh, sincerely, I used it only once in a meeting of over 50 people and it worked quite well. I'm not that familiar with it as a Zoom, but still, the prices are not high at all. And there are lots of options, uh, free options during the quarantine. So they give you lots and lots of resources. And uh, you can do polling there questions and answers so you they what they like they have solutions for deaf hard of hearing users and sign language interpreters so they have some uh, a built-in instrument for that which is really nice and have made lots lots of tutorial directly particularly at online teaching so 
if you want to use this instrument, it's also very good. It's also very good, and there are so many tutorials you can learn how to do it in, in a bit. And uh, our resources are a power soft unlimited, less known, of course, but it supports all the way operating systems. And you can record like from your from my screen. You can you even use an Apple TV, I think, to, to record an iPhone, a PC screen. And uh, all these tools that I listed here, they can record your webcam and your screen at the same time because uh, both instruments that record just uh, the screen or just the webcam are not that useful to us, I think, in teaching. So. Uh, this one was priced $64 per year, which is quite okay. Uh, Screencast-O-Matic, this one, what I liked about this one, it doesn't have any high definition videos. So the videos are done easily, they are, don't weigh much. So if you need a quick course or a quick video, it's the way to do, or if, um, I don't know, we don't need it to load that long. I don't know about which locations we are teaching and uh, what are very like internet connectivity. So this one is quite good also. You, you can also use it to synchronize recording and video footage. Sometimes we are like lagging. So this one has a synchronization tool. You can also zoom, draw, add overlays on video files. So it has some basic video editing tools also. It costs like basically from 150 per month for the basic feature. And what else? OBS Studio. This is a free and open source. So this is what's, what's not like here. You can do unlimited live streaming. It records in high definition also. It exports if an FLV format, which is quite okay for a video. And uh, it has a multi-view, it has studio mode. You can enable plugins and scripts also here, so it's quite good. And you can integrate multiple sources, which is not, I mean, it's not a given for most of the screen recording tools. This one has it, so, and it's absolutely free. So we can consider also this one. It works with Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, ShareX. It's also free and open source. And this one has no watermark because the previous one, it gives you a free version, but it puts its watermark on, on the video, which is not a very pleasant thing. This one doesn't have it. So there are no ads, no watermarks. It's very, very lightweight program. So you can use it on any device. A nice thing that I found about it, it has text capture also, OCR. So, it doesn't have a video editor, it has a photo editor, and you can convert your videos. Okay, and this one allows you to program your computer to start recording your screen at a certain time. So I don't know if we need that. But anyway, it's a nice feature to have. Okay, Bandicam is just for Windows. So no, no Mac users here. This one is very, very ultra HD, let's say. This is very high quality video. Uh, it, it records everything, Excel, spreadsheets, web browsers, PowerPoint presentations. So it, can, uh, it has a free version, but they place a watermark on it, on your video. So in the end, so I mean, I don't know. But uh, on the other hand, the price is, uh, for a lifetime price is 39 uh, bucks. So it's, I mean, it's not that expensive. It has some basic mouse effect, chroma key video, so you can change colors and portion of the screens and if you need it. And maybe, maybe for the kids it's, it's cool. I mean, because we're planning to teach to school children in the end. We have Fillmore, supports all the operating systems. You can add annotations here, so it's kind of a whiteboard um, feature here. Uh, you can adjust the cursor, so I think it's a nice thing for a kid because you need to see, uh, they need to see where you circle things or where you look and you can draw attention to certain things. And beautiful cursors, so, or light up, so it's quite pretty. Um, price is, is okay. It's $40 for Windows, $45 for Mac, it's discrimination, but <laughs> it's the way it is. 
and it has a picture in picture options also. We have Screencastify, also working on all the operation system. The big pro about this tool is it's free. It can uh, capture a webcam, the entire screen, a part of a screen, and uh, as all the other tools, you can export it in many, many formats and you can upload to YouTube, but we don't need that. Probably we'll place one of the lectures about borders website. I hope it has enough space for all our lectures. So keep on coming. And I place here a link to a manual, which explains very well how to use this tool. And uh, this tool also can blur out sensitive sections. I, I hope we don't need this one, but in any case, it's here. Uh, screen flow, supporting only Mac. So no Windows users here. Uh, if I think about Mac, well, it's very expensive <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, so basically you are recording in a, a Retina solution. Probably it's, a, it's very, very good quality, but also the price is very high for this tool. So better maybe stick with Contagion, and Zoom and WebEx at this point. Although they have a rather cool styles thing and templates thing, it's like they're absolutely beautiful. I love them, but uh, they're expensive anyway. So what is were like uh, the tools I listed? Uh, with a bit of explanations, the webinar tools, I... Uh, Sorry, it's very nice here. So the webinar tools, I uh, just listed them without too much explanation. So basically we have the three favorite ones, Camtasia, Zoom and Webex in the first place. And um, then I added like Demio, which is a good tool, but it's quite expensive. Then we have GoToWebinar and uh, Webinar Ninja, Jet Webinar. Uh, I guess we'll place all these lists in the Google document because I put them in a text file also, so you can read it easier. Um, get response, click meeting. Um, we have live stream, which is a very, also very useful tool. Mm, webinar on air, which allows to post surveys and chat functions. And easy talks, which I don't really like, but I put, that's why I put it in the last place anyway. So. Here is an, a, not an exhaustive, but a quite digital webinar tools. I actually read, checked all the ratings and read the reviews on these tools. So that's, why, that's how I placed them. Uh, so Zoom, WebEx, uh, they have like integrated whiteboards. So you can use those. Of course, they're not that very, they don't have so many functions, but they are working. So. Uh, kind of concept board is a good one. It's very large, it's very complex so for very complex projects. We have Limna, which looks like a real, like school blackboard, and um, Vision is very is quite good for taking notes. And um, okay, there is a long list. Most of them are good because you can share them, and uh, the kids can contribute to them basically, so they can do their changes or uh, like write on them. And uh, it's quite an uh, like interactive kind of tool, the whiteboard. So maybe it, we could consider integrating them during our online lectures. Uh, this is an example of how, of how one of these of this instruments looks like and all the functions, which is quite a mess here, but actually they are very functional. You can uh, like drag and drop lots of stuff also here, and it's not necessary to draw by hand, obviously. Add the images and buttons and everything. Okay, of course, I had to add the online courses platforms. Uh, we, uh, probably everybody knows because, uh, like, everybody here is like a researcher, they know everything about the MOOCs, which and um, I, uh, I edited all the, I, all the list in order of like the ratings that people put on them online. And uh, there is a, a second column which I edited, which uh, I used more often. Like, of course, you know, Coursera, Udemy, Treehouse, Skillshare, and Link LinkedIn Learning. Uh, 
I, I don't know if we could access Coursera free of charge, probably if we ask. <laughs> because the bank can do. Now Coursera opened for COVID, uh, they opened uh, most of the courses as far as I know. But I may oh, that's cool because, uh, of course, we'll be distributing them for free, but uh, registering lectures on Coursera is not free of charge. I mean, so. <laughs> and uh, I, I really like that platform. So if they allow us to do register like uh, classes for free, that would be great. Also, Udemy is quite a good platform because it works from the like. Uh, it, it's very good also to check it on the, on the phones or smaller screens, so it's, uh, it's quite good. Of course, you can distribute courses for free also, but you cannot register them for free, so there is a fee. So, yeah, so all these platforms that I like, and I also placed the ones that people like from online, some of them I never heard of, so like Academy of Mind Music, edX and articulate like although articulate is quite popular and i never heard of it so it's good that i have this job to collect all these tools um i'll go i'll go check them out later okay i placed some additional teaching resources here which i didn't put in any other category so far so uh i don't know if you know it model because I talked to some teachers, it's quite, 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 quite popular. And I checked actually this platform. I also registered there. So you can plan a class and they, you can do tests, you can do quizzes. They are like, uh, uh, you can choose the quizzes. Like um, it more or less looks like if you ever used call tricks for surveys, it's like when you can add like, or pre-made pre like questions or uh, adjust to your own. So it's, it's the same basic idea. And uh, you can send for, like different types of invitations to to kids. You can invite collaborators to listen to the same class. And uh, I, I really like this platform, and I've heard it's quite popular. So check out that model. Uh, it might for kids. I mean, for school kids, it might be much better than uh, like Camtasia, Zoom, and everything else that you're using because you can actually plan a whole class there. And okay, so I'll leave you the list. I put Skype last. Well, I actually included it in the last minute because sincerely, uh, <laughs> I, I use quite Skype in the past, even during lab meetings and during experiments because my colleagues from like, from other like countries were running experiments and I was like actually physically, for example, in the lab in LA and I was like running the experiments for them and I was walking around with a laptop of the face of my colleague on the screen, right? And put your microphone also to him. So he's just like running the experiment and is interacting with participants, which is, uh, well, it's not a mess, actually it works. So even uh, such a basic tool like Skype can do its job like when needed. So, okay. That's, that's, it took me three seconds to register in the ed model and uh, plan, a, plan a class. So <laughs> this one is really nice. And it's very intuitive. And that was right, like <laughs> I went through all the, the tools that I collected. So, and probably Anastasia will put them in the Google Doc. I sent her the text. Yes, I will. Them. Yes, yes. So it would be nice if somebody could like uh, comment or just complete the list. It would be nice. Or, uh, maybe you can suggest uh, other instruments that you use. And I, I can't wait to hear more about Zoom from Mikhail, actually. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you Thank very you. much, Anna. Uh, and yes, for sure, we will share after the presentation and we will share the Google Doc you have sent, so as we did in, in previous webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, I believe we can move forward to Mikhail and then we can go for a question Great. round if needed. Yep. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you, Anna. Hello, everyone. Uh, well, just one word about me. I'm not a scientist, I'm a teacher. And to be sincere, I normally have experience only with the groups, which I already know, which is of course very different to the job that we do, because normally if we start to give a webinar to someone, to some school, to some high school students, we don't know, it is a very different situation. Uh, however, I will tell you 
some ideas, uh, just ideas of mine, which maybe can be also useful if you talk to some group you don't know. So the first thing uh, I find important when you talk to high school students you don't know is um, to simplify. It is a very obvious thing, but still I wanted to say this because um, I know that every one of us, we tend to be maybe faster or maybe more, um, yeah, we want to put much more information in, in the time we have. So always think of simplifying what you're talking about. And then of course, when you simplify, uh, if you can adjust to the group, because uh, normally if you have like 20 people in front of you, and uh, I can compare with the group we have now, we have actually only six videos, including my own, and the others have turned their videos off. Please ask the students to turn the videos on. I don't ask now every one of you to do this, but when you talk to students, it's very important, because then you can see reactions. Uh, it really, it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a big step. It sounds small, but it is important. Uh, and of course, if you see the reaction, if you see that it's, it's simple, then adjust, then be faster. And here I want to give an example of um, American style textbooks. I'm sure every one of you have seen such in your subjects. Uh, American style textbooks, they start always very, very easy. And then at some point it gets very difficult which is for some cultures, I come from Russia and in Russia we don't have this culture of textbooks, but it can be very useful, uh, especially at the beginning. And I would suggest this method also while working with students, with high school students you don't know. So like a rule, you can tell 60% of your lecture in such a way that it is acceptable to almost everyone. And then once, you have the last 40%, then maybe you can start making it gradually difficult. And let's say the last 20% can be really difficult so that maybe there are three, four people who understand it and the rest don't understand. In the end, we want motivate people to learn more. It's not about just giving a lecture, it's about making them feel that they want to understand more. So it's good to have one part which is not understood by everyone, but at the beginning, the first 60%, it's very important that everyone has the feeling I have learned something. So it's on the first point. Um, on the second point, using Zoom, basically I don't want to speak about all the functionality that we have in Zoom. I also don't know all the functionality. I wanted to tell you three easy methods which are very useful. So the first method has nothing to do with Zoom, actually, you can use it in every platform, is um, asking students to give a very fast feedback. So let's try to do with those who have the cameras on. Can you please show if you agree with what I'm saying now uh, fully, then just so show five. If you don't agree at all, then show me that. And if you are something in between, you can show this. Okay, so, okay, one, two, three, please show everyone. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. It's very fast. I mean, really, it's very easy for all of you to do this. And it's very easy for me to understand how it's going on. I have a feeling very fast and no, normally students are also sincere in what they do. There are also technical methods for that, but I prefer just this one. Okay, the two others are more sophisticated. <laughs> Not everything only about showing your hands. I wanted to tell you about two games. If there are some mathematicians, then you surely know these games already. Uh, and maybe some other professions also have it. But anyway, these are games which are useful for any subject in case you want to make your lecture more interactive. So the first game is called Regatta. The second game is called Carousel. And there is some difference between it. The first one is better when you want some small group of students uh, to work on some topic for, let's say, five to 10 minutes. And then you want to discuss it with everyone. Why it is good? 
For example, in mathematics, you give four exercises, everyone thinks about these exercises, and then already you tell the answer. So it's very educative. You let the students think, but then you explain. So they think and learn. The second one, which is called carousel, is very good when you have teams of very different uh, um, path, of very different speed of understanding. You can make them work in very different speeds. And for both of that, you need two tools. The first tool is breakout sessions in Zoom. The second tool is Google Docs. Well, how breakout sessions work? Unfortunately, I cannot show it because I have to be a host to show it. Uh, but basically, if you look um, in uh, below on your screen in Zoom, where you have the participants, the chat, uh, the possibility to show your screen, and so on, if you are the host, you can have also breakout rooms. What are breakout rooms? You just define, I want to split all participants in three groups, in five groups. I can do it randomly, which is also a great feature, especially if you don't know the students, you just do it randomly. You can also assign uh, specified students to every room. And then you split them, which means in the same Zoom session, they will be split in three, four groups. You can see every group, but they cannot see each other, which makes them work in teams secretly. Uh, so you can really simulate a classroom where you put them in different places, which is quite easy to do. Okay, we, we check who understood it, shows me five who didn't understand. Okay, very good. So we can go further. So you split the, the students. <laughs> ah, okay, Nasia. I, I didn't understand yeah. because I don't have this bottom of breakout rules, uh, rooms. Maybe it's because I don't have paid account. Okay, I see. No, it is because you have to specify it in your account once you uh, make um, uh, different options. Okay. So it can be that by default, there is no possibility for breakout rooms, but then you have to go to zoom.us and then you can just put a tick mark and then you have this possibility. But there are plenty of explanations on the internet, so it's easy to find. Okay, Nasia, you, you said you didn't understand, but then I have to answer. I mean, it's important if someone says, of course, you have to react, but I think it was a joke. Yes, it was a joke. Please go. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, okay, so let's imagine we split us in those groups. So let's say if, you, if I see now there are 17 people, so 16, I would split them in four groups. Each group is four. Normally, you know the rule. If there are in a group, there are two, three, four people, five at most, everyone works. Once you have six, seven, someone will go to YouTube or will go to Facebook and I mean, TikTok for the students. So let's imagine we split them in groups at three, four people. Then you have private chats. So the chat you have now will be split then in groups. You go to your Google Classroom, and I will show it now to you. Uh, just a moment. Okay. Can you see it? No, you cannot. Yes, yes, now yes. Uh, Giovanni? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying. Ah, okay, now you can see. So it's, it's easy, you just have yeah. to see three uh, animals. If you see three animals, <laughs> then everything works. Okay, so it's just an example. You have, um, so it's just a normal Google Doc. And, uh, one second. Yeah, it's a normal Google Doc. Everyone gets their own. So per team, you have one Google Doc, which means there are only four people who have access to it. And this, which, which I show here, is an example of a regatta. So let's discuss 
this first type of the game, regatta. You put, in my case, here are math exercises, it's fifth grade, fourth and fifth grade, so they're 10, 10 and 12 years old, and it's in German, sorry for that. Anyway, um, these are five exercises. You give 10 minutes to them to work on these exercises. The good thing is, of course, you see in real time how they work on it. So they can discuss it in Zoom or they can write here. And you tell them that they have to write the answer inside of this. For example, I, here I can show you an example where the answers are already in. Okay. So the students think about it for uh, 10 minutes. They put their answers. Then you can stop the possibility to work on the file. So you can like freeze the file. It is given here on the right. Can you see it? Again, it's in German, but here you see that you can comment, you can work on the file, you can just uh, look at it. So you can choose between those three, and at some point you can stop the students so that they cannot work anymore. And then you say, you bring the breakout rooms back together. So there is also a button which says, okay, everyone comes together. So again, you have 20 people in one room and then you can explain the um, solution. Again, this educative moment in your case, if it's another subject, you can maybe discuss some phenomenon. And uh, some advertisement is at this moment, uh, when the coronavirus started, I was searching for, um, for a good um, tablet and I found one. It's a very easy, it's, it's, it's a vacuum. Of course, you can buy any other. I don't really want to make advertisement, but I just wanted to just tell you that it works very well. So with this, you can write on the whiteboard, which you have in Zoom as well. So, which means when I, I stop this, then I go and I open the whiteboard like this, and I say, okay, let's start. Here is the solution for the problem number one. And here I, I write the solution. So, and again, I can ask everyone, do you understand? Do you have questions? Please ask. Um, here, the good thing is below on the right, you can change to the next. So it's very easy to go to the next. And here I draw some lines and I explain something different. And then if I want to come back, I can come back and I can see it. So it saves everything. And even if I stop, and then I come back, I can again see it. Okay, if, do you have any questions to Regatta? <laughs> can I ask, hello? Yes, please. Yeah, I have many questions because I could join only late. I'm sorry, because of internet uh, connectivity, poor connectivity. No problem. I would like to learn all these things, maybe from the start. Uh, is that possible to uh, contact you some time for help? Yes, sure. To learn all these subjects. Let, yeah. Let me write my email. Or, <laughs> sorry, Anastasia, can I ask you to write my email in the in the chat? Yes, I will. Yeah. Yeah. Just because yeah, yeah. I have the one, I don't have it in mind, and you know, I want to put it yes, all sure. in one email. Thank sure. you. you can yes, write of it course. Yeah, that would be great help. Yeah. Ah, maybe one point. It's very important to ask students to change their names to real names because now the person who asked, I can only say, dear iPhone, I'm very glad to help you again. But it's, mm -hmm. with students, it's really important. So please ask them to put their real names uh, there. It's very mm -hmm. easy. You can also change it when I put my, mm -hmm. uh, well, if you double click, you can, also, you can also change the name. Students very much yeah. like to put some, Superman, yeah, I yeah, know, yeah. other names. The so short names and pet names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was not personal. It was just an occasion to discuss this point. <laughs> Funny names sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, actually, Misha, uh, maybe some a comment on this. I mean, you said yourself that the students are easily bored and easier distracted in these lectures in, in online setting, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I was wondering if there is a way to, you know, if, if it's better to, to allow them to have a pseudonym 
as long as they give us also the real name somewhere else, you know, like as a menu, like decide who you want to be in this session. Because this could give them a bit of, uh, you know, incentive to stay a bit online more because, yes. as you said, they're distracted. Could you think well, this works? Could you see this working? I personally prefer to try to put some clear, uh, you know, guidelines for these formal things and to make the seminar interesting. It's uh, another, another question. That's why I'm also telling about all these games. Yeah, it's important not always to be only just to give a frontal lecture. I mean, I like frontal lectures very much, but still, I think it's important if you have planned more than one hour, or let's better say more than 40 minutes, it's very important to build in some kind of interactive activity. But I would not, you know, you know put a lot of emphasis on this informal stuff, like being cool, okay, put your name you want. I mean, it's not what we want at Lectures Without Borders. We want still to have some kind of structure. Yeah, like yeah, I would like to share my experience today. I took class on Skype with students. So uh, one thing I could not see them all together on the screen. Sorry, I, di I didn't understand it. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In between, there was a call. So I'm sorry. <laughs> So in between, I was asking students, are they there or they are understanding or not? Because I was not getting any response. So I had to ask them again and again, you are there or you are understanding. So in between, there is a, sometimes there, this problem is there in uh, volume, voice and connectivity, things are, things like that happens. Yeah, that is one thing. So which uh, medium is good? Like some people they are doing meeting on zoom some are trying skype uh, then uh, i found some difficulty in signing up with zoom although i sign up uh, successfully but skype was easier for me like it was there already then which are the other mediums like which are good for us like google classroom you are, that i need to learn from you maybe if you like oblige that and then which are the other medium which are uh, good in connectivity and where we can uh, maybe maybe i can add something here uh, sorry your name is is shivani in, am, I, am i correct yeah i'm shivani here sorry yeah, yeah. sorry sorry thanks uh, actually one of the, uh, some of the things that you mentioned have already been uh, I mentioned in the first part which was anna's lecture and uh, okay, we okay. also are going to provide a lot of uh, information on this exactly on the skype and the platforms that you said so keep this in mm -hmm. mind, it's, it, there are some comments on that. And uh, yes, so that's actually one part for your question, maybe. And um, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe uh, we can also let uh, Micha, Micha, Micha speak uh, for the end of his talk, as he has planned. I don't know, how, uh, Misha, you must have some more material. And we can also ask you yeah. later things. Maybe I also yeah. started, so I'm responsible for the um. distraction. There is a one more medium that I heard, like Cisco something, WebEx, Cisco WebEx. Is that good one? Like, which you recommend I don't <laughs> for classrooms and for interaction with students? I don't know, really recommend it. It's a bit, uh, it's not open source, and but uh, I think Skype is much better. Okay, actually I have only uh, the second uh, game to explain, which is very, also very mm -hmm. similar to the first one, also in terms of the technical uh, realization. And then I'm done, so I, I will need like four or five more minutes. So the second game is called the Carousel. Again, we will need the Google Doc. The um, mm -hmm. uh, big advantage of the second game is that teams can go at very different speeds. Uh, so let's imagine you have 20 students and at some point well again if it's the first time you see them it is difficult to know but it can also you can also try to ask if you know some students want to be in a faster group or in a slower group or anyway if you don't ask but then in the end you will see that they are at different speeds it will also be very useful so you divide them again in groups but then each time 
you give only one exercise. And once the exercise is answered, you correct it, mm -hmm. you give the number of points, and you give this team another exercise, which means that after 10 minutes, it can be that one team has already done three exercises, but the one is only thinking about the first one. Again, since you have breakout rooms, you can go to the room where you have the slow team and maybe explain them the solution because you know they are stuck. So you can explain them. On the other hand, you can give more difficult exercises to the group, which is uh, more advanced. And I will just shortly show you an example for that. So here is the game. Again, can you show me if you see it with the five? Okay, very good. So here we have some easy combinatorics exercise. And as you see, uh, well, this was a process fertig. Uh, it's called in German, I'm done. So they write, I'm done. And then I know they are done because otherwise they may be just discuss it with, the, with each other. And then I see, okay, you've got three points. And then they discuss the next one. And then I say, okay, you got three points again. So now you have six. And then this is called, you haven't got it. So you don't, and then again, three points and then four. Because in this game, every time you do correct solution, you go one point higher. So you have plus four, plus five, plus six, plus seven, and so on. And once you break, you fall down to three or to six. Maybe there is like un, some thumbs which are not burned, like six. And then you go further. And of course, they are very happy. At some point, they get like 10. And of course, you can do jokes and say, because you are so funny, I give you 0 0.59. Uh, so it can be some fun as well. Yeah, and you have also comments here, which is also quite good. So someone saying, ah, there was a theorem, and here is the Wikipedia link for this theorem, so you can check it. Yes, basically, I think this is everything I wanted to say. So maybe we can start with specific questions to the two games or to the technical realization of those, and then we can move to general questions about everything. Any questions? So are there some specific questions? <laughs> Maybe we need to also to show you, you know. <laughs> we are already conditioned, you know, Pavlov's dogs. <laughs> yeah, and I see also that Ilya, Ilya also joined. I mean, we have two Ilyas actually here, but Ilya, uh, the one who will have a lecture soon in Caucasian uh, school. So if you have some specific questions to Misha, maybe you can write uh, to him. Or, yes. Because I guess depending on the availability. Yeah, I, uh, is that lecture already over? Sorry? Uh, from the next expert is that lecture already over or uh, i think i joined late so i missed a lot <laughs> we will share the presentation so you will be able to yeah to pick up this, the information yeah. yes sure thank you very yeah. much to our keynote speakers for the information any questions <laughs> if um, i need to learn a lot about on so i would Asked like already asked me, uh, Mikhail uh, for teaching me that I request, and since I lost already the presentation from the next great expert, so I would like to learn from the, uh, you know, from the sharing of that presentation. If I get to learn about that, and then if I have questions, I will come back to the presenter. So I'd like to have their email. Yes, yeah, I, I will send uh, as you. well as presentations. I will send you. You can count on having the presentations, and uh, yeah, yeah. And that will and be you great. can you can uh, email me, and, and, and I will well. connect you. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Because yeah, we are in yeah. contact it's anyway. Great. Yeah, it was great efforts from you, Bob and Anastasia, to bring you two experts to us. No, it was and everyone because of everyone connect. was. It was not me. It was. It was. It was No, no, it was. Yeah. Yeah, and with Misha. yeah.
and nice to it was a common it's thing. nice yeah it's great to hear from you both young people very knowledgeable you try to you know share your expertise with us and i'm looking forward to take your help further to improve Thank upon you, my way of teaching and you know <laughs> yeah. okay thank you thank you so much thank you for warm kind words uh actually we have uh, another news to my share pleasure. with you uh, not exactly about online uh, tools but about our new project uh, oh great better that not me will introduce it but uh mm -hmm. our new colleague who we are happy to meet and greet mm -hmm. here Eugenia, are you here? Yeah, sure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Oh, great. Okay. No, no, so they are Sorry, I have someone talking in the background, so I'm going the, to go uh, to another room. Mm -hmm. So my microphone was Sorry. muted. Okay, that's great. There we go. Um, so basically, um, we have a new project that we got a grant for uh, developing uh, webinars, a series of webinars that we are, oh, great. yeah, we're going to start. So the grant came from uh, an organization that is working specifically with things related to coronavirus and the pandemic in general. So um, we asked for a grant to start setting up. Uh, well, I mean, actually uh, expanding our already uh, existing uh, series of webinars, but this series in particular will be focused in viruses. So uh, we are recruiting lecturers that have knowledge in uh, virology or in epidemiology and public health to um, help us lecture for those webinars. And the idea is to give free webinars to schools, uh, any schools, because mostly all the students um, are now in, in confinement and they also have to rely more and more on these uh, online tools and also so since most scientists are not able to travel anyway, uh, it's also a good way to keep scientists involved in uh, the work of lectures. So, um, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Eugenia, <laughs> um, and I will be starting to work with lecturers uh, in a permanent way um, very soon. Uh, but for now, I'm only involved in, in this project. So I'm very happy to be here, and thank you to the two speakers for all the information. It will be also extremely useful for what we're um, developing now. And, and I'm glad to learn more from you. And thank you. Thank you very much. So if you would like to give a, a lecture of, on COVID, please let us know. We will be doing this. And uh, if you want to tell about economical consequences of COVID, we have a place for you yeah. in Nepal. 250 people are waiting for this. Yeah, um, I'm going to share here in the chat in case you want to uh, share it with your, um, I don't know, with all your, your, your network of people that you might know be interested. Um, there, there are two forms that we're using for requests of webinars and for uh, lecture volunteers um, that are specifically for, for this project, but you can also use them if you want to volunteer in general for anything else. So um, then we will, uh, well, I mean, the, the, these lectures will be also added to our resources online and to our database so that the people that can participate now in this project in the future can also participate in, in every other project. So feel free to share it around. I will put the links here in the chat. I will share the, in the presentations there are also the links to the form so you will be able okay. to catch up with this as well. Okay. Thank you very much. I believe we are we are done with the, with the official part of our webinar for today with the, with the two keynote speeches and the information about the new project. It's uh, actually the main thing we wanted to share with you today. Uh, so in case if you would like to ask some questions or to discuss some supportive teams, we are, we are here. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask uh, something to Diana because I think she's here uh, today. Yes. And um, 
Hi, Ben. And you also shared some resources, if I'm not wrong, from a, a new project uh, which are available, like, like courses for kids at home, um, which you shared at the Slack channel. Yes, uh, yeah, I just... Yeah, could uh, you tell a bit more about this? Yeah. Um, yeah, to be honest, uh, I don't really know much more about it. Um, I was just sharing it to you and uh, as I understood, it was kind of newly set up, like specifically um, under the Corona crisis. Um, but I don't really know much more about it, I'm, I'm afraid. So I just had a quick look on the website and since you had this channel of sharing other projects, I thought it might be interesting for you. But no, I have not touch with them. Okay, okay, because I'm saying that since, since we discussed about a lot of different platforms that we put together resources, uh, another thing to consider is to use resources wherever they are available and not develop new, uh, but integrate them into the curriculum. For example, like uh, Anna said that you can drag and drop material into the whiteboards uh, and also Misha showed us some examples for the, for the regatta. Maybe you can make an uh, adapted regatta on this, you know, like something... Uh, that it has already some material, I was thinking. So yeah, I can also share this link uh, at some point. Uh, I mean, I will share this link also after the meeting uh, for the people to take a look. And I'll send it to Nastya. Great. <laughs> so she can share it with the presentation. Yes, yes, we'll be happy. Thank you, Nastya. Okay. Um, yeah, not, not the question from me. I'm, I'm still thinking of the regatta and how I can do something like that for physics. So now I have to start thinking. <laughs> I'm still thinking how to implement it, but uh, uh, no question from me. Any, no other question from me. But um, maybe indeed somebody... In general, I want to say that if mm -hmm. as someone... Go ahead. Um, in general, uh, just I, I'm just using my position of not being the scientist and being the teacher here. Uh, if you want to uh, maybe uh, ask for advice or maybe you want just to chat for 10 minutes about how you best structure your online lecture or also not online lecture, feel free to contact me. I can just brainstorm, not that I'm an expert, but maybe they will, will together find some good solution. Yes. Yeah, and maybe I don't know. Maybe Georgi or like Ilya, if you if you have uh, any questions of your future lectures, because actually after Misha showed these examples, I understood that I was making this online lecture about astronomy completely wrong. Like I had no feedback. <laughs> I was basically like a radio. <laughs> so I think that actually for me, I kind of yeah. <laughs> I don't know, or maybe Eugenia or anyone who has experienced uh, similar things. Yeah, yeah. To me, it also it also happened. So I mine was not a just a lecture; it was a full three day course, and I separated in like shorter lectures so that people could like have uh, breaks and stuff. And I remember the first one, I didn't ask them to show their cameras and and to actively like show whether they were listening or not. And it felt awful. I was at, at at some point I was like, okay, are you there? And then they were like, yeah, yeah, we're there. Okay, <laughs> I, I don't know, just turn on your cameras. I need some sort of feedback, especially if you're used to teaching in like live in person, then not having feedback is, is very, very difficult. So I think um, these activities that, that Mikhail showed of how to like, give separate them in groups and give them small tasks is also really nice. Um, in my case, because of the nature of the course that I was giving, that I needed to be actively present in all the groups, what I did is I just separated them in groups over time. So basically, we were all using the same room because people from one group could stay for the, for the next one if they wanted. They wouldn't participate, but they could stay. But if you don't need that and you only give them exercises, I think separating in rooms is extremely useful because you can just overview all of them as a, as the, the post but then um, they can be working separately and I think it's it's really like Zoom has, has it very very easily done so you can just merge things and separate them again and it's really really and for the people it's, it's automatic they just they are assigned to a group and then they are remerged into the main room if they 
So I think that was a, a really good advice. Yes, I agree. Thanks a lot. Ah, yeah, Diana. Yeah, actually, it's still a question to Anna, like if she can maybe include in the presentation some photos or some links, like how it has been done, because it was quite descriptive, but I can't really picture it, like how it really looks like in the seminars. I don't know if can, you have any additional material on how to include the small tools um, you kind of mentioned. That would be really helpful. Yeah, I knew the time would be like very short, so I just concentrated everything in one bulk. And maybe it's just, yeah, sounding like a radio, <laughs> like we were saying, just no, no. saying it out. So, yes, I had lots of screen captures, but I decided not to include all of them because, like, I mean, it's too much. And anyway, you cannot see from the screen all the details, so it doesn't make sense. But um, all these tools, there are, like, the links to the websites, and there are lots of tutorials, actually. So they go step by step and tell you how to include this stuff and how to do it. And of course, there are some open source sources. And <laughs> by the way, uh, I think before recording uh, a lecture, I'll uh, go back to Mikhail and ask him many questions because <laughs> teaching to students is so different from teaching to, <laughs> to kids. Because about students, let's be sincere, we don't really care. <laughs> we work for course credit, they, they, they have to be motivated by themselves, like, you know. Of kids, yeah, you have to keep them engaged and occupied and interested. And that's quite a challenge. More than choosing a tool, it's like how to keep them engaged. Of this. Well, I'll give it, I'll get back to you when it starts recording for sure. Uh, from my side, Anastasia and me, we will uh, put in just a Word document where uh, everything is described, what I discussed, and I think we will add some print screens and maybe uh, yeah some other pictures from Google Doc and from Zoom so that it's quite clear how, how you work. Yes, sure. I believe I may announce that we are done with the official part of today, but for, for the networking, it's possible to stay and talk and chat and discuss the problems of online education or uh, uh, different ones. Just wanted to officially thank you from, from the whole team for coming and joining us here. Yes, and actually if you can unmute, not unmute, yeah, like to make a video so that we can make a photo of everyone, if you want, I don't know, because I didn't see some people and I don't know if you have cameras and Daniele or Benjamin or anyone, or Jana, if you're here. Ah, nice, <laughs> so good. Uh, yes. Ciao, Daniele. <laughs> so good to hear you. These are our uh, our alumni, lecturers, professors, and all around the world. So then I will make a, a screenshot if you agree. And yes, great. Thank you. <laughs> you all have very nice uh, backgrounds. <laughs> no, no, let's let's show what we have learned today. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, actually, Nasia she left already, but we organize a, another webinar next week, which is really incredible with incredible also uh, lecturers, and you're very welcome to join. Also, it will be with uh, Theo and with others. So if you are able to join. You're welcome. And uh, if you want to learn more about what other news, we will share with you the slides. And yeah, thank you. Thank you to everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Then stay in touch. And if you want to stay 